This is the landmark Sydney Harbour Control Tower, an 87 metre high concrete and steel tower consisting of a reinforced concrete column topped by stainless steel and glass observation and operation areas. Built in 1974, the tower gave maritime controllers the prime position to oversee shipping movements within Sydney Harbour. When surveillance operations moved to Port Botany in 2011, use of the control tower was discontinued. In 2012, the Barangaroo Delivery Authority acquired the tower with the aim of demolishing the structure and restoring the headland to a naturalistic form after a century of industrial use. The tower's removal will complete the overall vision for the headland park. The state government approved the demolition in mid-2015. Liberty Industrial, known for its inventive deconstruction solutions, was awarded this landmark project due to its innovative and carefully considered deconstruction method that would minimise the impact on local residents, businesses and visitors to the Headland Park. The tower is situated in the middle of a public space with an extremely close proximity to a residential area with many heritage listed buildings. Due to the unique nature of the control tower's structure and its centralised location, classic urban demolition techniques such as scaffolding protection, heavy crane lifts or concrete sawing would have caused major disruption in the surrounding community. Liberty proposed a deconstruction method unlike any other performed in Australia to date, combining a custom-built heavy-duty work platform with remote-controlled demolition excavators. Working from the decks, the excavators would pulverise the concrete core and push the debris inside the tower shaft for safe and efficient offloading. In April 2016, Liberty Industrial began the meticulously planned step-by-step -step process of bringing down the tower. First, Liberty Industrial implemented a comprehensive environmental management strategy to monitor dust, noise, vibration and meteorological data including wind speed, direction and rainfall. Mobile cranes were brought in to erect the circular mast climbing work platform, the backbone of this massive undertaking. Next, a 20 metre high dust proof wall was constructed to separate the works compound at the base of the tower from the adjacent public cultural space. After a careful assessment by the engineering team, a section of wall at the base of the tower was cut out to allow the installation of a steel chute and materials handling area that would receive the demolition materials. All asbestos containing materials were then removed from inside the tower. Once all of the plant and equipment, lifts and associated running gear were removed from inside of the lift shaft, the materials handling chute was complete and demolition could begin. First up, the roof and window facades that formed the control and operation rooms at the top of the tower. These elements had to be carefully deconstructed by hand and removed via the materials chute and alamac where required. Next, the remote controlled excavators were loaded onto the platform and demolition of the concrete tower's slabs and core began. The environmental impact of these machines is incredibly low in terms of noise, dust and vibrations compared to classic demolition tools and equipment. They also represent a major improvement in worker safety as they are remote controlled and considerably reduce the risk of direct personnel exposure. Safer and quieter, the remote controlled excavators carefully demolish the circumference of the tower as they work their way down on the movable platforms and push the debris inwards. Safely collected in the materials handling area at the base of the tower, the rubble was then transported off-site for recycling. Once the tower reached street level, the mast climbing platform was dismantled and replaced with a mobile crane fitted with a concrete pulverizer. The tower was then demolished until the foundations were exposed the tower's concrete foundation was then fractured, enabling it to be removed. The final stage consisted of excavating the sandstone at the base of the tower and constructing a brand new trafficable ground slab to extend the underground cultural space. Liberty Industrial also undertook rock face stabilisation activities to the exposed sandstone and reinstated the surroundings of the tower, which included the construction of new landscape areas blending into the existing Headland Park. Project Resource Recovery exceeded 98% of all materials. Only 2% of the waste generated from the project will go to a landfill. 
The project team's extensive experience delivering high-profile and complex deconstruction projects was critical to achieving minimal disruption to the local community and upholding rapport with project stakeholders. After just over a year of careful planning combined with meticulous precision and hard work, Liberty Industrial has completed one of its most unique deconstruction projects to date, without incident and in line with stakeholder expectations. The Sydney Harbour Control Tower removal project is successfully completed. With the removal of the tower, the vision of a restored naturalistic headland has finally been achieved, creating an open and natural foreshore parkland for current and future generations to enjoy for years to come. All thanks to the team at Liberty Industrial.